Hello, welcome back. Now it's time to look at probably the simplest example we can see in, in the context of 3D rotation and a fun one actually. And that is a simplified version of gyro gyroscope. So for this, uh, how do I draw it? It's a little... Let's pretend I have this disk. And it is rotated. So with some rate along its axis. Well, no, we don't even have to assume that. Let me stick a, a, a frame to this object. So this is my X, Y, and Z. So this is a So um I think I'm trying to think what is the best way. Let me do this. Consider a disk with I X Y I Y Z I Z X equals zero. So this is a case. It doesn't have to be a disk for any object. Let me actually write this and let's go consider an object, a body object. So you can always find some orientation of your body fixed axis such that these products of inertia are zero. So in, in this case, the X, Y, Z is called the principal, principal axis. And more on this later, I'll get back to this, how we can find these um, principal axes and how we can make our inertia matrix essentially diagonal with all the off diagonal elements being zero. But for now, for this particular case, it for this way that I have defined my um, my frame, they turn out to be zero for this disk. Um, also, in this state, in, in this disk example, also here we know that there is this kind of axial symmetry. So it doesn't actually matter how I, um, as long as Z, is, Z remains along the axis of the object and I, I just any orientation of X and Y really works the same. Um, we have axial, we have axial symmetry. I hope that's how you write. Symmetry with double M, I don't know, I never knew. And in this case, let's call this IZZ, the moment of inertia about the axis of the disk. Let's call it IA for the axis. And my IXY equal, no, this is XX. I x x equals i y y equals some i t for transverse. Did I want to do this? Yeah, let's do that. So remember the very long Euler equations in the previous video? With these assumptions that the products of inertia are zero, equations actually shrink significantly to something that is much more uh, manageable. So mx, moments about x is, let me write it as, 
no, let's, let's keep it this way. So I X, which is my IT now, omega dot X plus I A minus I T omega Y omega Z and Y equals again, transverse direction omega dot Y plus this is I T minus I A omega X omega Z and M Z, these are all M's. Sorry if my handwriting isn't the best. This is M, this is M is I Z, which is my axial direction, omega dot Z plus uh, I will have I T minus I T. Let me write it down. I T minus I T omega Y, omega X, omega Y. And this one is obviously zero. So you can see how equations have shrunk to something that is a lot more manageable. And I have three simpler equations. Now let's consider a curious case. So these are the, the rotational equations of this disk. Doesn't matter how the disk is rotating in a space. But let's consider a particular case. Um, so let's assume all omega dots are zero. So your angular velocities are not changing. So omega dots are zero. And also let's pretend my omega Z is not zero. So the disc is spinning about its axis. My omega um, Y is also not zero. So the disc is spinning and also kind of rotating about it, the vertical axis in this figure. And let's pretend omega x is zero. So I'm not tilting this way. Now, if I plug these into my equations, all omega dots are zero. So the first terms disappear. My omega x is also zero. So the last term in the second equation is also zero. In the, in the second and third equations. So the last one turns out to be mz equals zero. The second one also turns out to be zero. The first one is the curious one, mx equals zero plus, plus this ia minus it omega y omega z which isn't zero so that is the most curious thing about uh, 3d rotation i still don't really have this in my head what is going on here i have seen it i see the equations i have seen it how it works in practice i've seen it in the equations i know how it works mathematically but the intuition, what is going on, isn't there. So this, this to this day, is one of the most bizarre situations. So let's see what's happening. What it means is that I need a non-zero moment about x-axis. If I want to have constant, I repeat, constant angular velocities about z and y. So to keep a, a constant rotation about y, I need to torque it about x. What is happening? I don't know. I am speechless. So this is the, the classical gyroscope example that three 
effects in three perpendicular axes are working together. You have one spin of the disk about Z. You have a precision velocity that the disk goes around um, about, maybe you can draw it, maybe about the point, I don't know. And for that to happen, you need a moment or a torque perpendicular to both of these axes to enable that to happen. So very curious case. And yeah, this is how you can see the Euler equations show up in practical um, real world situation that um, these couplings between the terms of different omegas and inertia terms show up in rather non-intuitive ways. Okay, so that is that is all I have for now. I'll try to find a gyroscope and bring it to class so we can play around with it. Um yeah. And until then, I'll see you I'll see you soon.